you for having me. Uh, so yeah, the trace stack package, what it does, it takes your most recent error message and searches it on Stack Overflow, which is what you were going to do with it anyway. Uh, so actually, since then, I, since I wrote that, I actually started working at Stack Overflow, so uh, driving more traffic is always useful. I'm going to talk about a package that I didn't write on my phone, but is really no less useful called Broom, that converts your statistical models to tidy data frames. This fits into an ecosystem of tools that we call tidy tools. So what is tidy data? Who's heard the term tidy data before? Who's familiar with it? How it becomes excellent. Most people. It, represent, it represents data frames that are arranged with one row for every observation, one column for every variable, and a different table for each type of observational unit. There's a lot of theory and elegant philosophy that goes into this definition. And for details, check out uh, Wickham's 2014 paper, Tidy Data. But what's uh, really exciting for the uh, R ecosystem and related ones is the tools that work with this. So uh, uh, three of, of Wickham's own tools, TidyR, Dplyr, and ggplot2, all take uh, tidy data as their input and, really, and work with manipulating it. TidyR reshaping it, uh, Dplyr filtering, summarizing, uh, grouping, joining, ggplot2 visualizing. Data.table is another really powerful tool and was one of the earliest uh, uh, tools in R that really used this philosophy to its uh, to the structure to its full power. Pandas is uh, in Python, not R, but shares a lot of the same ones, so that this philosophy really goes across uh, languages. So these are really powerful tools, and they've led to a really great ecosystem for working with data, where you take a uh, um, messy data, use some tool to uh, tidy it, uh, like tidyr, use another tool to manipulate it, like dplyr, and then visualize it with ggplot2. That's really potent, and certainly a lot of my analyses look like that. And it works until you get stuck when you start doing models. When you do linear models, uh, machine learning, trees, you name it. The problem is, as soon as you've done that, it becomes harder to manipulate and visualize. You can't use the same tools. And the reason is that model objects are messy. So what does messy mean? I'm going to take an example of like a canonical, really common model we might work with uh, of a linear regression. Let's take a really simple example. The code's a little small up here, but it's uh, doing a linear model of miles per gallon by weight and acceleration of, on the um, built-in cars data set. Uh, most of us will know what this uh, summary of a fit object, uh, most of us are probably really familiar with uh, looking at this. And this seems good to us. It gives us all the information we could want, right? Well, it's really hard to start using this and working with, a, with uh, particular tools for a couple of reasons. First, you've got your uh, coefficient matrix that takes multiple steps to get out. You've probably done this a lot. You take summary and then take the coef of the summary and then turn that into a data frame, because right now it's a matrix, uh, to get it out. So already you're doing three functions off the bat. But even there, your job's not done because you've got information in row names. When you have information in row names, that means you can't stack multiple models on top of each other because data frames don't like to have duplicated row names. You've got column names that are kind of inconvenient. Uh, they have punctuation in them. They have spaces. Uh, and that means they're going to be converted to have uh, periods in those, in those places instead, uh, which really isn't what, what we're looking for. And then you've also got information of other kinds, like the uh, p-value from an f-test on the regression that is printed out in this output, but it's never stored. It just appears when you print it. That means when you've got it, when you uh, do this, you've got to, um, uh, whenever, if you want to use that p-value, you have to actually calculate it yourself. So individually, we all, we're all, all programmers, we know how to deal with them. But taken all together, these four steps, uh, these, four, these four issues, and others like them is a massive inconvenience. It's something that really stops you in your tracks when you're trying to go from your data to your visualization to your output. The fact is that these inconveniences aren't an exception in terms of modeling. They're the rule. Any model object, as soon as you want to start using tidy input tools like, uh, like dplyr, data.table, ggplot2, you have, to, uh, you have to do these manipulations on them to make it tidy. So that's where the broom package uh, comes in. Broom is a, a method, a function called tidy that when given a model object returns a data frame. Here it's a data frame uh, where we have it's just one function, not say three. Information is moved from the row names into a column and the column names are made convenient and uh, consistent between, uh, multiple, between multiple kinds of models. And this is gonna let us use our particular, uh, our particular set of tools with that. So that's, what, that's the definition of what Broom does. It takes model objects, turns them into tidy data frames that can then be used as input to tidy tools. I brought up the tidy method. But we, uh, 
But we really actually have three uh, methods for extracting statistics from an object. Uh, we have tidy, augment, and glance. And they define three levels of output we could want from our models. Uh, so I already showed the, uh, the tidy function. Uh, what, what it does, so this is tidy, where it take, focused on these coefficients, but that's not the only information we have in a model. We also have value, things like predictions, fitted values, residuals, Cook's standard uh, uh, error, and those come out of the augment function that is going to deal with that, adding information about every observation. And third, besides tidy and augment, we have glance. That's information about, that, about the model in general. R squared, adjusted R squared, F statistic, P value. This information comes out uh, of the model level with glance. So yeah, to, uh, to there you got tidy. Every row is one of the coefficients in the model. It's a component of our statistical model. Augment gives us another data frame where every row was an observation from our original data. So here it was one row for every one of our cars in the original, but it's been augmented with additional columns. If you notice, it's going to have dots on them that are starting every new column to, show that, to make sure they don't conflict with your original data. So by augmenting our original data with these things like fitted values, residuals, uh, we, can, we can start to use those in our tidy tools. And then glance is always a one row data frame. Uh, it has columns for R squared, adjusted R squared, sigma statistic. Uh, that gets you, I guess, our one row so that maybe we can com start combining multiple ones uh, using their particular glanced output. Tidy, augment, and glance. And Room works across a large set of model objects. It's been around for about a year and a half now. And we've started to build up a really good uh, set, set of tools that, that approach a lot of the R ecosystem. So for instance, here we have a nonlinear least squares model. Uh, I, like, I like this function a lot. I think there's more sophisticated tools out there. But here I'm fitting a particular exponential model to the uh, cars data set. And we get out, it looks, a, it looks a bit like an LM, but it has some differences in structure uh, beh behind it. And when you do tidy, augment, glance, you get out your, uh, your tidy information, one row per term, your, uh, your augmented uh, observations, fitted values, residuals, and your glance, your single row data frame with statistics for the entire model. K-means clustering. Uh, here, this, is really not, this looks nothing like a linear regression. Here now what we have is our cluster information. We have knowing where every single observation, which uh, cluster every observation was stuck into. We have the within cluster sum of squares, all these things. So, uh, so really notice it's not, this is not a predictive model, this isn't a regression model, this is a, you know, now a cluster, but it still has a structure that you can take tidy, augment, glance. Tidy would be one row for every cluster in the original data. Augment is going to be one uh, column for each of the, uh, one column, oh sorry, one row for every one of the original variables are in our iris data set with which cluster it is attached. You can imagine now suddenly now we can take our original data, start making plots with it, with our cluster added as a column. And Glance is an entire row describing the cluster operation, including total sum of squares, total within sum of squares, and between sum of squares. So we pull it out in those three uh, methods. It's a really large set of uh, objects that we can take and, uh, and tidy. Uh, a couple examples are things from the survival package, uh, GLMNet, um, various kinds of see, power H test ob uh, objects. Let's see what else we got. We got um, here we have JAGS and STAN. A lot of people talk about STAN today, and you can take out of STAN a uh, data frame that's going, to, that's going to have its particular um, uh, the estimated value, uh, the estimated values out of your out of your uh, model. You're going to have, uh, yeah, obviously generalized additive models uh, from the GAM package, ANOVA, and so on. Uh, so if you had if you had to the GitHub uh, room, we have a full list of the models we cover, and it's still growing. Uh, and so I've shown why we can get uh, data frames out. So why is that useful? Why is that more powerful in the kinds of analyses we want to do and the kinds of problems we want to solve? Well, the first thing to note is that if you, if you like using ggplot2, as I do, you can, uh, you can visualize tidy models, and really only tidy models. Uh, what it, it likes to take data frames and say, put this on the x-axis, put this on the y-axis, use these other um, uh, parts of the data for faceting and so on. And uh, it, so it really wants to work with that. And that means, as an example, if I take that LM fit from earlier, and if I, uh, yeah, if I, so if I take that, that LM fit from earlier, and I want to say, like, uh, here's our coefficient plot. I want one 
uh, uh, one bit on the y-axis for every coefficient. I want error bars in the confidence interval. You can get that out in just one step by tidying it and then feeding it straight to ggplot2. We have a coefficient plot from our, uh, our linear model. Survival package, uh, this is a, what is it called? A Michaelis Menting, no, no, it's the other kind of curve. I don't remember what this curve is called. It's been forever since I, I used it. Kaplan Meyer, yes. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so this is a Kaplan-Meier curve. It's showing the, prob the estimated probability of survival over time based on a, um, on a lung cancer data set. So in one step, we tidied it. And then in the next step, uh, and then we immediately can feed it into ggplot2. If you've worked with, uh, if you've worked with survival uh, of factor 4, it's a really powerful and, and useful package. But the output definitely was not ready to be fed in. Because it gets turned into a tidy data frame, one row per every, uh, every observation you're gonna want in this, um, every one of these individual points, along with columns for the uh, confidence intervals there, it's really easy to feed into ggplot2. Another example is lasso regression. This is out of a uh, cv.glmnet object uh, that does cross-validation and then says, as you change the tuning parameter, lambda, how does the estimated uh, mean squared error change? So right out of here, we get to, uh, Wait, all, we, all we just did is, is tidied it and then glanced it. And this output that you see with the, uh, with the curve, that's the tidied output saying what's the uh, estimated mean squared error and, and the range for every uh, individual lambda. And, what's the, uh, and also the glance gets us what the minimum standard error is and uh, the standard error within one standard, uh, within one standard deviation uh, is. So that, uh, that's a way to recreate this plot and to customize it using ggplot2. So really, that's, uh, that's pretty powerful. But where the real interesting stuff comes in is we start combining and comparing tidy models. Once you have a model as a, t as a data frame, you no longer need to work in a list. We can start stacking them. We had a stacked data frame with uh, this, this, with them put right on top of each other. And every one of these models might represent different parameters that you set in your model, different methods uh, that you use and are combining. They could be bootstrap replicates. There are some good examples in my manuscript of, uh, of using bootstrapping with uh, with tidy data. They could be subgroups. You could be fitting a model within every country. You could be fitting a even biological data set. You might be fitting a model on every gene. It could be an ensemble voting method uh, that are doing different kinds of weightings. But in all these cases, now we get to recombine them into one model. And we can uh, annotate every, uh, each of these models with one or more additional columns and then work with them, uh, maybe in, say, a factorial combination, and then work with them with these tidy tools really elegantly. So I'll give uh, two examples here, which is uh, we could plot a nonlinear least squares fit uh, using ggplot2 with the augment. I take a nonlinear least squares fit, and then I do a, um, I, I call augment on, and I just say fitted value by the, um, by, I draw a line. So uh, pretty dull, nothing special. But if you can do that for one, then it's just a very short step away to do it for, say, 50 bootstrap replicates. Turn a little bit uh, transparent, and then you can see, oh, I can see how the variation in bootstrap appears. I can, see, I can spot outliers because we're able to recombine these models and plot them together in that way. Similarly, if you can plot one instance of k-means clustering, and there's a handy way to take a look at a k-means cluster, is to do, um, is to say, plot my x1 and x2 points, and then let's also have our uh, color by the, the newly added augmented dot cluster uh, column. Uh, and, then we can also, and then we can also take the tidied version, which has the center information, and say um, that's, that's the x's. That's actually where each of the centers of each of them are. So that's the way that, uh, that GG, we can uh, use tidying to make ggplot2. But now we can start stacking it. And let's just plot it for multiple values of k. So now I can look at what changes as you increase from k equals 1, just one center, two centers, three centers, four centers, five centers. And we can really tell when we look at this, oh, yeah, the ideal was three, uh, was three centers. I didn't do any looping there. I didn't do any. Um, uh, and I didn't do any like, like, like special munching to get, the, uh, to get the data to work together. It pops out really naturally once you have tidy data, st uh, tidy models each stacked on top of each other and then annotated with a K column. So uh, yeah, that concludes what I wanted to show with, these, um, with uh, these, some of these examples of Broom. You can learn a lot more from the Broom uh, package vignettes. It's up on CRAN. I have a couple examples of, um, uh, of using Broom with dplyr to combine multiple models. Using uh, that k-means example has a really more uh, as a more thorough version in the vignettes that shows how you can also start calculating things like cluster purity uh, if you have an, like, like an oracle based on the um, 
Uh, you can start calculating these things in a, in a simulation with k-means. And also doing bootstrapping, there's a function built in that'll help you with some of the aspects of uh, create many bootstrap map models so that you can stack them and plot them and work with them. Uh, you can learn more from a manuscript that's currently on the archive and is in review at the R Journal uh, about, uh, about the Broom package and has more examples. You can definitely go to GitHub. Please open up pull requests or an issue if your favorite models aren't currently, don't currently have a tidy um, augment glance method. Uh, definitely, definitely try that. And if it's the end, I'd like to thank the people that contributed to either the uh, Broom package or the paper. Uh, here's a list of a good number of them. Um, uh, yeah, uh, and thank you very much for having me.